All right, welcome. This is Mary Beard um, explaining My Big Campus. Um, My Big Campus is a website that is used for a lot of different things, and Pike Township is currently using it to reach out to students in a different way that incorporates technology. Um, to get started, all you have to do is go to www.mybigcampus.com and click on Login. Under School, you should select Pike High School and use the same username and password that you would to log into a regular Pike computer. And then click Log In. You can also have it remember you um, so that you don't have to log in every day. Um, it will first bring you to your activity page, also known as your quote-unquote wall. And you should notice that it looks a lot like Facebook, if you have a Facebook. Um, it was designed kind of to look like Facebook so that it was really easy to use by students. Um, the first thing I want to show you is kind of your, is your wall. Um, you can see on my wall I have um, the different things that I've posted. Um, other people posting and blogs that I've subscribed to will pop up here. Um, what pops up on your own wall kind of depends on what groups you subscribe to. And I will get to that in just a minute. Um, to the side on your the left-hand side of your screen, you will see groups. Pike Township has already uploaded your classrooms by period um, and all the students are already in your classes. So I'm going to click on my first period multicultural foods class um, and if I click on the members tab you can see all of my students are already in this class. They have promised to update this every night so that you do not have to add and delete students as your classes change. Um, Let's hope they keep that promise. Otherwise, it's, you can create your own groups as well if you want to, but it's pretty convenient to use the groups that have already been set up. Um, under your each of your classrooms, you have an announcements tab. This tab is used to make general announcements to all of the members of your group. Um, so in this case, all the students in my first period multicultural foods class. Um, you can see lately, I try to post one announcement a day, typically with a review of whatever we did that day. Um, for example, yesterday on Tuesday, we did a web quest over Scandinavia. Um, I posted the link to the web quest so that they can do it if they were absent. Um, today, I posted actually a bundle, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, that overviews all the materials for our test tomorrow. So it's a great way for students who were not in school to get the same materials as if they were sitting in your classroom. Um, to post an announcement, you just type in this box. There's only 255 characters allowed. Um, you can also post different items out of your stuff. You can see these are the recent things that I have posted, and it remembers the documents that you save so that you don't have to find them in your Dropbox or um, flash drive every time you want to post something. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about schoolwork next. Okay. Um, schoolwork is a tab that you can use to assign quizzes and tests and other assignments to your classes. Um, and the most recent one that I did was a Germany-France quiz. So I'm just going to pull this up. Um, you design your quizzes however you want to. Um, mine was just a general quiz. And when you input questions, you can make them multiple choice, fill in the blank, um, true, false. You can have them upload a file, like, a, for example, a Word document or a PowerPoint. Um, or you can have them even write an essay. Um, multiple choice, multiple select, true, false, and fill in the blank will all grade itself, meaning that you do not need to go in and grade those questions. Um, unfortunately, essays and file uploads do not grade themselves, so you, you will have to go in and grade those, and I can show you that quickly as well. Um, so you can see I, I designed a simple 10-question quiz uh, for answer choices per question. Um, and after this, you can allow several different options for your quiz. Um, I have it so that they can take it once. Um, and they have 60 minutes to take it. Um, I had them start it last Friday, and it was due 
the following Wednesday. I typically give them a couple of days to take a quiz that I expect them to do at home because not all students have access to technology. Um, so you should be mindful of the demographics in your own classroom. Um, like I said, I give typically three or four days. A weekend is nice if it fits well with your lesson plans. Um, you can allow them to take it multiple times if you want, um, or give them a longer time limit depending on what you want. But it's important to note that once a student starts a quiz or assignment, they need to submit it. Otherwise, it will time out and not allow them to submit it. Um, so you can see here a bunch of my students um, took the quiz, and it shows me when they took it as well. You can pull up a report that will, given you in alphabetical order, their scores, which allows you to easily input it in the gradebook. You also can see the statistics from each question, so how the different sections of your classes answered each question. And you can kind of, from that, um, see how they're doing in your class, okay, and see where the errors are occurring. Um, so I'm able to see what questions they know really well and what we need to go back and spend more time on, which is really useful. That data use is a huge part of RISE, and you can really prove that you're using your data if you're doing these quizzes. Um, this type of statistic analysis, you'd have to spend a long time in Excel to do on your own. Um, it's also nice to do these quizzes um, online because you don't have to spend class time doing them. Um, even though it's only 15, 20 minutes for a quiz, you can spend that time doing something else. And I always allow my students to use their notes on their quizzes and kind of tell them it's, it's a little mini test and it will prepare you for the test that is to come. Um, they can also go back and review their own quizzes so they can see what they got wrong um, and what they need to study from, which is very convenient from the student side of things as well. All right, next we're going to move on to conversations. Um, you can have different conversations with students on here. Um, they can talk to each other as well, which is important for you to know as an educator. Um, you can see I had a conversation with a student, let's see here. Um, and she just told me it won't allow her to take the quiz and um, so I was giving her some advice. It's a great way for your students who don't like to email you to send you a quick message. Um, for example, if they submitted an assignment and they were absent, I'll have them send me a reminder. Or they can send you a picture of a lab that they made up. Um, that way, it's, it's just a convenient way for you to communicate outside of school with your students. And it's completely secure and supported by the district, so you don't have to worry about um, breaking any rules um, as far as that goes. Um, lastly, in this short training session, I'm going to talk about bundles. And a bundle is simply a group of different things. And I'm going to show you my bundle that I created on Europe. And I can see I've had 42 views already. Um, this bundle, I do a bundle per unit. And this allows me to group all of my files for particular subjects into one, essentially my big campus link. Um, and I can post the entire bundle for students to look over. Um, you can see in this bundle, I've included all the PowerPoints and Prezi's and listening guides, um, also recipes from the labs that we've done. Um, interesting websites kind of as a supplemental tool. And I also have lately been really trying to promote um, doing the flipped classroom thing. And so I will voice over my PowerPoint using the same tool that I'm using to create this video, which is Screencast-O-Matic. Um, and it will, it will voice over and then I'm able to post the video on YouTube and then post it on my big campus in my bundle. So that allows students who were absent on the day that you we did the Germany PowerPoint, for example, to still get the notes. And you can see it plays really easily. It's a YouTube video, so it's accessible even during school hours. They can get on YouTube to view your video um, if they're on my big campus. Um, and the sound is not really good. My sound's turned off. Um, but you can see it's really convenient to have that video accessible on your page. Um, and the reason that it allows you to show YouTube videos is because you've approved them, um, which is a neat feature as well.
Um, I've also posted to the study guides for this document. Um, and the great thing, the other thing about bundles is that you can share them with other teachers. Um, if you choose to make your bubble bundles public, um, you can see there's all kinds of bundles that other teachers have created. Um, some very popular and some that only that teacher may use. Um, it's great to be able to share materials with other teachers. Um, for example, I was looking at nutrition and wellness. And they only have one that relates. There we go. Let's just type in nutrition. Um, they have all kinds of things about obesity um, and other food resources, which would be great for our classes. Um, this is a very neat bundle, very popular, as well as the obesity one. So just oh, another way for you to share materials and not have to reinvent the wheel while you are making your own lesson plans. Um, so I'm, anytime you click on the My Big Campus thing, it'll take you back to your wall if you haven't noticed that. Um, there's a lot of other features, and as you explore My Big Campus, you'll figure these out. You can also do a calendar. You can run a blog. Um, you can keep all of your documents on My Big Campus. It, one thing you should know about it is it does have unlimited storage, which is huge. Um, even Dropbox and other websites like that have limits of two or three gigabyte, two, three, two or three gigs. Um, my big campus, it's not a problem. You can post videos, you can post huge documents, and they're not going to take up all your space um, on your school drive. Um, EduTalk, I guess I will talk a little bit about this to conclude. Um, EduTalk is kind of like Twitter for schools, um, and so you can post things that you're thinking about and hashtag and trend things as well. And if you're not into Twitter, you don't have to do this. Um, I think the students think it's kind of cool because they can follow you um, and see what you're up to, as, you know, and don't post anything that's inappropriate, of course. But um, it's, it's just a neat way to communicate with your students again. And you can follow different people as well. You can follow other educators. You can follow administrators. So um, it's a good way to communicate with faculty as well as your students. Um, so I hope that you learned a lot about My Big Campus, and this concludes the My Big Campus video training session. This is Ms. Beard.